Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and today I'm actually going to be doing my Formula One 2022 predictions as to what I'm thinking is going to happen throughout the season with both the constructors side of things and the driver's side of things. So you asked as many if you can tell, I am definitely a McLaren fan and I also do support Mercedes. I'm just gonna say out front that I want my engine supplier to do as well as my personal team does. But with that being said, I'll try my best to make this as non-biased as possible, but please note if there is one team that is better than another, it is just my opinion. I have absolutely zero factual evidence to back up any of this. Preseason testing hasn't even been completed yet. So this is a complete shot in the dark. So for constructors here, starting in 10th place, who I think will do the worst this season, should come to absolutely zero surprise to anybody. Unfortunately, it is the American team of Haas. So yes, they did make mention that in 2021, they are they were more or less focusing on their 2022 car. Um, I do think they will have some improvements. It will be a better handling vehicle. It'll be more under control. Um, but they'll still be at the back of the pack. They'll take that distance from wherever they are from behind, you know, Williams and Alfa Romeo, and they'll close it. But I don't think it'll be anything that is like Haas World Champions or anything. I don't think that they've found any loopholes, anything of that kind of nature. But more on that front is why I don't think they've had that massive improvement is knowing that the team itself does not have that much money nor the facilities. It's an F1 team without any simulators. That's very questionable. But with that being said, there are so many new rules that I can imagine that there is so much more that can go wrong with them. But uh, as a personal opinion, as a team, um, if they don't drop out by 2026 when that next new set of regulations are uh, put into place, I would actually be very surprised. I would say anywhere between 2024 and 2026, I think Gene Haas would say enough is enough. We've been at the back of the grid for, I don't know, six years or whatever at that point. And he's like, I'm, I can't have my name attached to it. I just can't. But on the driver's side of things, um, to absolutely no one's surprise, uh, Mazepin would probably get an extension um, as Ural Kali. Kali? Ural Kali? Ural Kali. Ural Kali. There we go. So like I was saying, Mazepin will definitely get an extension as Ural Kali is the bankroller of the team. That is how the team is still afloat, is still in the sport, is definitely by, unfortunately, a little bit of uh, his father's investments. But as far as uh, Schumacher goes, um, I have some interesting ideas per se, or interesting predictions. Uh, I imagine that Schumacher will actually get some point finishes and will have a surprise announcement after the end of the summer break and will go to a new team as he has made um, implicitly that he's struggling to deal with Maspin as a teammate. So I don't know if that would be um, if like a Williams seat opens up, it'd most likely be to Alfa Romeo. But uh, with Alfa Romeo, um, I imagine that they'll want to keep Guanu Show and Botas um, into the 2023. But we'll get into that in a moment. But who will be place nine in the constructors? And bum -ba -da -da -bum, it's to no one's surprise, it would mo most likely be Alfa Romeo with title sponsor Rich Energy? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I, I say this out front because Alfa Romeo has said uh, very weirdly that they're like, oh, hey, we're doing this brand new, you know, sponsorship, and we think that it'll be, like, really good for both the team and for our sponsor. And uh, Rich Energy had made, made mention that they're not dealing with Haas anymore, but they're also, you know, getting into Formula One again for 2022. Um... I think who Alfa Romeo is signing with, I think Alfa is smart enough to realize that by bringing Rich Energy back into the sport, it'll probably do more brand damage than it will be uh, helping them out. And there have been uh, reports that Rich Energy was announcing like an F1 fan zone and it was just like a giant ad to like buy more Rich Energy drinks. So I think Rich is just in the process of continuing to be in the scam that they've been and just not actually fund anybody and are just using it, the hype of, hey, we're getting back into F1 to just sell more drinks. 
But that being said, why I think Alpha will, apart from the whole sponsorship side of things, uh, I think Alpha will probably be in place 9 once again, um, as they may most likely be plagued by the new regulations. Um, Zo Granu Zhou and Botas will underperform due to the fact the car is a little bit sucky. And even though that Guan Zhou is bringing a lot of money into the team, I don't think it's enough that we'll be able to... Um, I think it's too little too late, as the car has already been in development. I think there will be, you know, some issues with reliability. As far as the drivers go, um, Botas is in a multi-year deal. Uh, even though that he may have an issue starting up into this team for the first time, uh, I think that he'll be staying there for a little bit of time. And even though that uh, Guanu Zhou says that he has um, a contract just for 2022 for that year alone, I think that the money that he is bringing to the team will be very important to help stimulate more development to see if they can bring back their unreliable vehicle. And even though there might be not a whole lot of technical changes through the regulations from uh, 2022 to 2026. I think that Alpha might see a place or two increase in the constructor side of things, you know, in like 2023, 2024, 2025, as the money that Guanajuato is bringing is actually starting to be used and is really starting to um, help develop the car further. But again, like I was saying, even though Guanajuato has a uh, 2022 contract alone, I think that uh, it'll be part announced partway through the season that he will also have an extended contract through probably at least 2024 is my expectation. Now for 8th place in the Constructors Championship, I am going to go very out there on this one. I'm actually going to say that it's going to be Alpha Tori as the disappointment of the season. Um, I Just from how this is working out with the regulation changes, I almost know for a fact that there is going to be a midfield team that just crashes that is just not able to get the regulations right and i don't know who that is going to be offhand but just as a guess it's going to be alfatari um like i was saying similar to alfa romeo they'll be plagued by the new regulations and have an unreliable vehicle that isn't really able to go anywhere and because of that um Gasly will, as the driver's side of things, I think Gasly will be able to drag the car into the points, but into like the low points. But otherwise, I think he'll have a really bad season as uh, the season will be just absolutely horrible with the amount of DNFs and the car's mechanical issues. And to no fault of his own, I believe that um, Sonoda will be dropped. Um, again, no fault of his own, just because the car is so bad and um, Sonoda doesn't have the exact same... Um, I say Sonoda is talented, but maybe not to the same level that Gasly is, and won't be able to do the same thing of like even taking a crappy car and bring it into the points. I think uh, due to the DNFs, and I think uh, the emotional state that Sonoda will endure will just um, just kind of compile on the car, and the inability to get it to into the points will just eventually get him kicked, unfortunately. But that being said as there's now a midfield team that is lower in the points that means that the uh, current constructors that are already in that area might actually see a little bit of improvement i do believe that uh, williams this next year will go from p8 to p7 um, my thought process is that unfortunately with the passing of sir frank williams um a lot of people have said that with the recent era of formula one even though Frank was an absolutely spectacular person, uh, the more recent years, due to his stubbornness and his thinking of ways of how things operated in the past, did not change with how things were actually operating now in the future with the times changing. And due to his stubbornness, uh, there are a lot of things that were plaguing um, the Williams cars, especially in like 2019. And now the fact that they've actually changed leadership, I think they're starting to go into the right direction where they might actually start seeing a few more point finishes. Uh, you know, Latifi and Russell did both last year, which uh, coming from the 2019 car was insane what they've done in the past two years. So I think that with Albon and um, Latifi, I think they'll be able to do some really cool things. But I think they're still going to be at the back side of the grid. They'll have some little improvements, but nothing really to write home about.
I'm thinking that probably by 2023, 2024, Williams might actually be a legitimate, fully solid midfield team. And honestly, with the legacy that Williams has as a team, I really, really hope that they stay in the sport with the amount of manufacturers that are getting into it. Um, having like a, a name brand as historic, as legendary as uh, Sir Frank Williams' second team, I, I definitely hope that they're at least midfield by 2024. So that being said, again, on the driver's side, both Albon and Latifi will be uh, both in the points finishes. Uh, again, not by much, but they'll be up in there occasionally. Um, Latifi will probably have a contract extension unless Williams is able to find an F2 driver who is able to bankroll them or like a Formula E team that's able to bankroll them. Um, having Latifi's money, I think, is very, very helpful in uh, developing the vehicle and being able to get that to where it is. So most likely Latifi will have a contract extension, again, unless they're able to find another team, another uh, F2 driver or another driver to be able to you know, bring in the financial support. And then with that being said, Albon will have a single year contract extension into 2023 saying, hey, you guys are bringing it up in the points. We're doing great. Uh, I think that you're having a pretty OK year. But um, I think that due to lack of funding and maybe not being able to bring it up into like consistent points may eventually have Albon kicked from the team. And then like in 2024, maybe like uh, someone like Oscar Piastri coming in to taking that spot. But that's that's way out in the future. Just, this is just 2022 prediction. So we'll keep that aside for future videos. So that being said, uh, from the seventh place in the constructors, I believe that now going into finish into the sixth position would actually be Aston Martin. So with Aston Martin, even though that they're placing a position higher in my predictions, I still think that their new factory and their new leadership are the focus and not the car itself. Um, however, placing lower than what they were as with um, Racing Point and with Force India, I think they'll definitely utilize the additional wind tunnel time to develop a car that is better than 2021, but not massively. But again, kind of like I was briefly touching on, I think the new leadership will bring in the experience that they're looking for, but having that talent pool, I don't think will fully be utilized until you know, 2023, 2024. So take a year for all these new um, personnel changes uh, to actually take focus or to take a structural foundation. And then in 2023, 2024, they're able to build on that. Um, so it'll be, there's Aston Martin still in that transitional phase from racing point, but I think this will be a nice year for them. We're, we're as we've seen last year, they're solidly in the midfield. They won't have many uh, technical hiccups and any issues of that kind of nature. I think they'll, I wouldn't say they'll nail the regulations, but they'll do all right for themselves. So with Aston Martin's drivers, I want to say that Vettel will sign a new contract extension from, you know, uh, 2022 up through 2024. But again, kind of saving this information for a future video, I think that he'll probably announce his retirement in 2024. So this will be his last contract extension and then he'll um, kind of just fade out of the sport. That being said, uh, I think 2022 as a season will be better than 2021 for him, but I still think it would be uneventful for him in all in all. And then with Lance Stroll, I think he will place higher than Vettel in the Drivers' Championships, but not by much. I mean, like this last year, I want to say that Vettel was 34, excuse me, 43 points and Stroll was 34 points. So I think that'll be kind of close neck and neck, probably like, I don't know, 53 and 47, something like that. But that being said, as far as like any contract extensions and whatnot, yes, it, nobody knows exactly how long Stroll's contract is. But um, I think that he'll probably be in that seat until he's like 45 or like he physically can't drive the car anymore. So uh, this one will be also kind of an interesting one, placing this team so low considering what I'm wearing. Um, I think McLaren will go from uh, fourth in constructors to actually fifth in the constructors for 2022. Um, I believe that they might have a few issues at the start due to, you know, dealing with the car and um, working with the new regulations, but most likely will recover. 
Um, so in my mind, McLaren will go one of two ways, is either having just a little bit of a, a rocky start with the new regulations and then able to recover off of it, or they're going to completely blow it and they'll be where AlphaTauri is in like eighth and constructors. I have some hope for McLaren though, that it's it's not going to be um, the latter where they'll end up where AlphaTauri is and AlphaTauri will be where McLaren is in P5. But uh, my thought process is, is with McLaren, this is their first season where they're fully developing their vehicle with the Mercedes power plant in mind. Um, this last year was a little bit interesting. I'm surprised they did so well because they had the car set up perfectly for Renault. And then that whole fiasco happened where they pulled. So the fact that they have the Mercedes power plant in mind and they're able to develop the car around it, um, like I said, could go one of two ways. They're either going to have a couple of issues dealing with it at first, but I think in 2023 and 2024, they'll be able to really improve on it and really nail it that point, or they'll just completely fall off the face of the earth. So that being said, they're doing a little bit rocky at the start, but then improve a little bit. Uh, overall, I think it's going to be a very uneventful season for them still. So with the McLaren drivers, um, I believe, you know, my prediction is going to be that Norris will have a crazy race where he'll appear on the podium, if not actually win. So there are two races in 2021 where he almost won. Um, but I think that with the amount of experience that he's gained from this last year, I think he'll take a little bit more of a, a cautious approach and understand when to push and when to uh, listen to the pit crew to say, hey, we really need a pit here. Yes, you might not win, but at least you won't place seventh, you'll place second. With that being said, um, even though I'm a McLaren fan and I love Ricardo as a personality, um, I believe that Ricardo will still place consistently in the points, but not by much. Um, overall, I was not that impressed by his 2021 season, even though that he did win a race. Um, but I can foresee where Ricardo just doesn't really go very much further than where he's at. I think that we've already seen him peak, especially at Red Bull. I just think that the um, the Monza race in 2021 was a, a crazy race or a freak race where he just ended up in first. Um, but yeah, I can't see him really doing too much more where um, McLaren might sign a contract extension up through you know 2026 for the new regulations. But if they don't, I wouldn't be surprised that we didn't see Ricardo in the sport after his contract ends. And, you know, places are up, people are swapping. And I imagine that a lot of more F2 drivers will be coming in in, in 2023 um, into 2024 when a lot of our current contracts are ending. Um, but I think uh, Daniel might just be a little bit SOL where it's just like, hey, um, there's not a spot for you. Um, that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles, I guess. So vice versa, instead of going from P4 to P5, we've got Alpine in my mind, who will go from P5 to P4. And there have been reported basically completely speculative at this point. There's nothing, you know, confirmed about this, that Mercedes and Alpine have found a loophole in the regulations, even though Ross Braun has said, oh, no, there's like we've made sure that there are no loopholes uh, available. I think that the teams will find something. I don't think that we'll find a situation with like Braun GTP where there's something that just absolutely demolishes the field. I think it'll be like something minor that um, is really hyped up that turns out to be not a whole lot of a big deal. Um, but of course, like I said, the reports were completely speculative. Of course, uh, Mercedes was saying that it was like Ferrari and Red Bull. Red Bull were saying it was like Aston Martin and Alpine. Alpine said they had nothing to do with it. And you know, just nobody everybody pointing fingers at each other essentially but i i want to say that alpine and mercedes might be the ones that have this loophole but that being said um even with the loophole that make make them perform better in game position in the constructors championship um i think the new regulations will plague them occasionally um, and prevent them from being on the podium frequently uh, the one thing that was a little bit of concern as well was Fernando Alonso saying that he had no... He was not really asked to help in the development of the 2022 car, which is 
kind of concerning or rather questionable. But as far as the driver's side of things go, um, I think that Alonso will announce his second retirement after the summer break as his contract ends in 2022. Um, I could imagine that he'll, if that's not the case, he'll sign an, an extension for the contract for a year or two maximum. Um, he's already getting quite old per se and i would love to see him around I, I love the fact that he is an insane driver and an absolutely insane defender um might i you know bring up hungry that was uh, an amazing race for him but i i don't think that he's got that much left in f1 left in him so if he's not retiring at the end of this year it's probably next year with that being said if the seat is opening up i'm i'm um quite excited to potentially see someone like Oscar Piastri being picked up. I would love to see uh, Oscar into the sport. Incredible driver and um, already he's had some deals with Alpine. I want to say that he's currently their reserve driver. So if Fernando Alonso uh, says that he's out part two, um, I would want to say that Oscar Piastri is immediately picked up. That would be amazing to see. With that being said, um, as far as Akon, I don't think I really have a whole lot to say. I think he's already got a contract up through 2024. Um, I had imagined that he might see a podium in a crazy race. Um, and I had also imagined that between Akon and Alonso, that their supportive partnership is still there. But as they're consistently placing like um, sixth, fifth, and fourth, as, as they're getting close to the podium, that we might see, I wouldn't call them flashpoints, but that, that relationship may be straining a little bit as they're realizing, hey, if I push this car a little bit further, I, I could get a podium. And I think that might take a toll on their relationship a little bit. So here's for my next controversial uh, opinion, is that going from the second place in the Constructors Championship, uh, actually moving down a place to third would be Red Bull. I'd imagine that they are weakened slightly after the title fight as they did actually beat Lewis in that title and I'm, I'm here for it. Uh, even though I'm a Mercedes fan, I'm a little bit hurt over it, but I think Max deserved it as much if not more than Lewis. Um, so props to him fully. Um, but I think that because of the amount of development that Red Bull did with the car in 2021, trying to push Max up to fight Lewis and eventually making it past him and, and being able to pull it off, I think that will have moved their focus from developing the 2022 car to that current season. So I think that Red Bull might slip a little bit. Maybe for this first season, I can imagine that if if this is the hiccup season, that they'll be right back at it in 2023. But I think that they might just take a moment and, and take a step back and uh, try to recuperate after that title fight. That being said, I don't think they're going to have that big of a difficulty adapting to the new regulations. I think that there'll be a couple issues here and there. You might find uh, some unreliability issues. But fortunately, considering that Honda has already announced that they're providing their engines to Red Bull through 2025 at the very least, that there'll be less around the vehicle that will change. Instead of having to migrate to the new Red Bull engine, whatever that may look like, or if it's just a Honda engine rebranded as Red Bull, we're not sure. But uh, fortunately, at least the power plant, that side of things is going to stay the same. So if there's any new regulations that uh, Red Bull hasn't been aware of or is struggling to meet, um, I think that they'll have that figured out pretty quickly. So on the driver side of things, I think Perez will obviously score points more consistently. However, uh, otherwise uneventful season. He may potentially be dropped from Red Bull uh, for 2023 as his current contract is only two years um, I think how he performed in Abu Dhabi uh, well and actually just throughout the year you know, it's definitely ramped up a little bit at the end um, I, I can't imagine a contract extension being completely out of the question um, but depending on how he um, copes with the new regulations if, if that is something that he struggles with I can fully imagine him being dropped, but um, if Red Bull is keeping in mind what he did in 2021 and understand that that you know the new regulations have uh, their impact on the drivers too, that most likely he could I could see a um, contract extension at least for 2023 being signed. 
So then that being said, with our current and brand new uh, world champion, Max Verstappen, I imagine that he'll be on the podium every now and again, uh, but we'll definitely have a better 2023. Again, the new regulations in Red Bull, maybe not working out perfectly, but uh, I mean, consistently in like third and fourth, uh, fifth place, I could, I could see Red Bull, you know, fighting it out with Alpine. So with this one, um, we're going to do another controversial one. These next two um, positions are going to be a little bit interesting. Um, I think that going from first place in the constructors and moving down to second um, is actually going to be Mercedes. It was reported speculation, again, uh, that Mercedes was the other team to find a loophole, per se, in the regulation. Um, Mercedes has been quite well known to find loopholes in regulation, even without major changes, like, you know, finding DOS, uh, being able to push in the, the steering wheel to get the wheels tilted in more for better cornering and whatnot. Um, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, quite like Red Bull, uh, it seems like that Mercedes spent a lot of their time developing the 2021 car and, you know, making sure that, you know, it could push Lewis and um, Bottas into really making sure that they have the best car possible for that season as it was a very tough, tight season with Red Bull. Um, but quite like Red Bull, I think that it will be... Um, uh, taking a step back that even with the loopholes that they find and even though that like within a week of the end of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix that they're able to fire up their brand new car already um, I just don't think that'll be enough for them to actually consistently win races so that being said I don't believe that Hamilton will be pulling a Nico Rosberg and after the season ends announcing a retirement uh, I fully imagine that even though that the FIA's investigation may not be perfect i think that mercedes and the rest of the sport will pull hamilton back for 2022 but i imagine that either at the end of this year or into next year that he will retire or at least announce his retirement for the end of 2023 whether or not he wins another driver's championship regardless so that being said, uh, leaves us with George Russell. I think that he'll be beaten by Hamilton consistently. Um, but occasionally there might be a couple of flashpoints that we'll see between them because I do feel that George is an incredible driver, a very strong driver, and he wants to prove a point against Hamilton. And I imagine that every now and again we'll see those moments of, of you know, um, thinking back to Lewis and Nico having those flash points I don't think they'll be those that intense uh, I think Russell understands that he is definitely in a number two position where uh, Bottas was but um, I still think that even that being said uh, we will see uh, George's first race win out of this upcoming season so that being said we have one final constructor that we have not discussed yet who will be winning the 2022 Constructors' Championship and Drivers' Championship as well. And I fully believe coming up from third place to bring it all home in first place is Ferrari, bringing in the absolute surprise of the season. From what we've been able to tell so far, Ferrari has spent most of 2021 developing their 2022 car and they still managed to throw in an amazing upgrade on their 2021 car partway through the season and just kind of wiped the floor with McLaren um it was quite close originally but then McLaren I think started realizing that you know even though that they were ahead for a moment that they needed to start looking for the future for 2022 and they had some performances that were declining and Ferrari were on the incline and Ferrari still focusing on 2022 managed to take an already competitive car and make it better and I think they'll continue on that trend for 2022 and make an absolute unit of a vehicle. So overall, I think Ferrari are going to do absolutely outstanding in this season. If this prediction is wrong and they do not, I think that they'll at least be in second place for the constructors. So on the driver's side of things, I think that Leclerc will win a few races, 
but I feel like that he will still make a few mistakes, have some DNFs or uh, loose in places as he's dealing or coping with the pressure of actually having a race winning car for you know the first time. So I know he's been on a great uh, kind of streak recently where he's uh, over the past couple of years he's taken his mistakes and really started mitigating them or, or really negating them, getting rid of them. But I think having the pressure of a race winning car um, and starting to win races consistently and having podiums consistently um, will bring a sense of pressure that he is not used to and I think he'll make you will we'll see more mistakes from him but rather conversely we'll see Carlos signs um, even though that Leclerc will win races and then DNF and then you know podiums and then win and then DNF I think Science will be consistently on the podium, second and third, mostly second. Um, yes, he will win less than Leclerc, but with his consistency always finishing, always being on the podium, I think, hear it? you'll hear it first from me. Well, I'm not the first one to ever say this, but Carlos Sainz Jr. will be our 2022 world drivers champion i don't know i just i i've got a feeling with him that uh he'll be as cool as a cucumber he'll just take that card of victory he'll be doing absolutely incredible things with it um people were thinking that carlos would be this number two driver to leclerc and i think even ferrari was thinking so but as soon as carlos entered the um the team like he won last year over leclerc he got more points so if that's your number two driver, you better be questioning what your number one driver is doing. So I think that uh, Ferrari will let these two fight and we'll see a lot of flashpoints between the two of them. But I don't think that Leclerc will be the winner out of it in the end. So that being said, that is my uh, predictions for the Formula One 2022 season. Please give me your thoughts on all this nonsense down in the comments. I know for a fact that one of these if not most of these are going to be completely wrong <laughs> and i'm okay putting myself out there and stating that you know please take everything here with a grain of salt because this is the person who uh bought dogecoin back in january 2021 didn't seek going in anywhere sold it it then exploded in value i bought it at the peak again and then it went down in value and I also bought Ethereum and Tesla at their peaks, and then they dropped significantly. So please, I, this this is probably all Ron. <laughs> so comment what you actually think is going to happen in 2022. I definitely want to uh, talk with you guys and, and have those discussions in the comments section. So please uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tell me all your guys' opinions about what's going on. I'd love to hear them. So again, thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.